Mysterious Flesh Pit National Park, a wonderful vacation spot for the family. In the rural area of West Texas could be found the bizarre natural geobiological feature turned into a popular tourist attraction. In the early 1970s, during an oil operation, the flesh pit was discovered by James Jackson, and it was turned into a national park by Anodyne Corporation, which they opened to the public in 1976. They promoted the park as a fun attraction and downplayed the true horrors within the pit. In 2007, the park closed. Why? Because it was a disaster so grand, they had no choice but to close it. Today, we'll be exploring that disaster, another incident, the wildlife within the pit, and other fun facts that I found interesting. There's going to be a lot left out in the video, so if you want to learn more than what I'm sharing here, go check out the website in the description. Now, the pit has became so popular due to the fact that it's, well, an actual living creature with interesting anatomy. Hiking, camping, exploring, everyone will find the visit a fascinating experience while traversing the creature's insides. There are many exhibits that will intrigue the visitors and many life forms that will pique many's curiosity. This seems like an interesting place to visit, but again, it's very dangerous. From its life forms to the environment in general, it's very easy to get caught in a dangerous situation when inside the park. But I guess the visitors don't care, or maybe they just love the thrill. Either way, disaster was inevitable. The most notable disaster was the one that I mentioned before, the 2007 tragedy. We are provided an incident timeline which started at 10.28 a.m. of July 4th. There was going to be a concert and a firework display scheduled on the surface of the park, but it was cancelled due to high rains. The visitors who purchased the tickets were reasonably upset, so for compensation, those who bought a ticket were allowed to stay in the park longer, until midnight if they wanted to. 8 p.m. is the regular closing time, but like mentioned before, many visitors stayed in the park longer. During this time, there was a shift change, which reduced night staff in the control room. 9.30 p.m. While the visitors were enjoying their time at the park, there was a mining team on the other side. In the control room, an error appeared. There was an increased electrical demand for mining equipment and tourist infrastructure. The system must have been overwhelmed by these two things. 9.41 p.m. Water drainage from the surface rain into the entry orifice began to collect in the sand gullet. Drainage pumps are automatically activated by sensor systems, but failed to initiate due to the relay fault. Due to the moist environment ruining the equipment, the drainage pumps stopped working. As time continues, the sand gullet was getting completely submerged. There's a risk for the pit to start choking or coughing, so equipment holding the throat open was beginning to brace for it to happen. 9.51 p.m. The park's electrical grid had to be reset, which made the grid offline for 45 seconds. The PA system didn't notify guests because, again, this was closing time, so it didn't have to. Lights went out which made many of the visitors panic. This is obviously bad news for the people in the park. When the festival was cancelled, that should have been a warning sign for them to just leave. 9.52pm A choking action from the organism, the pit, began 31 seconds into the electrical reset. This caused irreparable damages to several sections of the internal infrastructure. Two of the six structural supports of the lower center are torn from the foundation and is tilting to the side. Real quick, to explain what the lower center is, picture a shopping mall that is also the center hub connected to all the activities within the pit. Which means many people come and go from this area, and because it's tilting, you could imagine that many of the people are freaking out and are probably sliding to the Side. A minute later, surface facilities are notified. Response teams are given the order to mobilize. Later, park rangers are dispatched to rescue groups of visitors trapped in practically collapsed tunnels and trails. 10.3 p.m. Because the pit kept moving due to choking and the rainwater, it caused one of the upper entry gantry supports to slip. An outbound elevator conducted an emergency stop, stranding over two dozen visitors. And as the flesh pit chokes and coughs, it causes earthquakes around the area. At this point, the creature is trying to shut its mouth. 10.12 p.m. A master failsafe is activated by automatic park management systems. Twenty liters of aconitine compound are injected into the superorganism. Though it was a bad thing to try to drug the pit because now it wants to throw up. Ew. 10.16 p.m. Many guests attempted to flee the stall elevator near the entrance orifice by climbing out the upper moist crop, but they were unsuccessful due to the rain making everything very slippery. Many ended up falling back into the mow. 10.17 p.m. At this point, the organism actually threw up. 10.19 p.m. A deep and incredibly loud roar erupts from the entity orifice, and the smell of vomit is overwhelming around the area. 10.26 p.m. Two park service vehicle and a tour vehicle containing park service employees and several guests attempted to ascend through the entry orifice tube. A minute later, peristaltic action crushes one of the tour vehicles and sucks the other two back into the nexal cavity and down into the digestive organ. Those vehicles are presumed destroyed. Basically, they got them all back in. No, no. 11.5 p.m. The lower visitor center's structural integrity is critically compromised, resulting in total collapse. Data connected with the lower center is severed. So everyone in there is probably crushed to death. Oof. 11.15 p.m. Response teams begin to descend into the surface orifice to attempt rescue operations when things calm down. A rescue team encountered a group of visitors who attempted to escape the stalled elevator. Most are dead and the remaining are mortally wounded and practically digested due to the caustic gastric ejecta. They were in digestive fluid, so it was probably, no, it was definitely a horrific sight. 11.41 p.m. Due to ventricle closure, no feasible rescue strategy can be developed before a complete mastication occurs. 11.58 p.m. Texas governor formally declares a state of emergency for Gumption County. 12.35 a.m. Three life forms from the pit are identified as being injected into the surface, which means they were in the throw up and they're outside of the pit. 15 visitors are injured and seven are hunted down by the life forms during the panic. Luckily, park staff managed to kill them before they could cause any more trouble, so that's good. Supplies and aid were provided and they had to contain everything. You think that would be the end of it, but at 11.20 a.m., several injured visitors inexplicably leave the field hospital and begin walking towards the open pit orifice. Approximately 38 individuals were able to climb down into the orifice over the course of 8 hours. None are recovered. The other sad thing is that many speculate that the other small groups of visitors and staff are still trapped inside. And this is the end of the 2007 tragedy. All this happened because of negligence and the flesh pit coughing. Gosh. 
This was obviously the incident that broke the camel's back and caused the park to shut down, but there was also another small incident that should be taken note of. This incident is called Circus Conchimus, a feature in the park, but is also connected to the incident that I'm going to talk about next. You see this thing right here? It's a, it's a group of people digested and melted together. How did this happen? Well, let's read the text. No laughing matter. Though it may look like a colorful ice cream birthday cake covered in glazed frosting, this calcified formation is anything but festive. In 1976, a group of performers accidentally fell into the upper mow of the entry orifice. While the soft flesh of the pit's throat somewhat cushioned the performer's fall, the unexpected dilation of the obligato folds allowed them to slide down into the then re-unenforced area of the pit. Rescue personnel were able to locate the performers inside the digestive sac a few hours later, but by that time, all 50 stunned people were already began being digested by the pit. Rescue personnel cut them out, correctly guessing that many of them were still alive. Oh. An experimental antacid spray was discharged on top of the gooey, shrieking mound, but it was too late. Instead of reducing the acidic effects of the partially digested bodies of the performers, the experimental compound flash calcified into the multicolored formation that you see in front of you. Though hauntingly beautiful, the Circus Conchimus is a somber reminder of why it's always important to observe all safety informations and to stay on the marked trails while visiting the interior of the mysterious flesh pit. To sum up what happened, 50 people got swallowed and then they got digested and fused together. Yikes. Now they're falsified together. What a horrible existence. And the fact that this is a feature in the park is kind of unsettling. Let's move on. Amniotic Thermal Springs, also known as the Pleasure Dome. Ooh la la. This is a popular area to visit in the pit due to the effects of the pools. It's like a healing pool in a pool that gives aphrodisiacal effects. This means it arouses sexual desires. I'm fine with the healing. I don't want to feel hot and bothered while at a park. What the heck? Especially a flesh one. What? There was even a drink made with the stuff, uh, well, but I'll get to that later. These baths seem like they only give positive effects to the body and mind, but um, well... After the park closed, the long-term effects of the amniotic spring fluid became apparent. Those who soak in the baths regularly go through depressive withdrawal periods. To experience the effect again, they need to spend thousands of dollars just to have the substance. So many are addicted. That's pretty sad. Returning back to the drink, it's made with amniotic ballast, harvested from a special glands within the pit. The name of the drink is called Coke Heartthrob, which was a limited promotion Valentine's Day drink during 1985, but it was added to the beverage roster in 1986 because of how popular it got, though it got discontinued in 2011 because after the 2007 tragedy, the cost of extractions increased. You want to get your fix, you have to spend thousands of dollars. Sad. Lastly, let's move on to the wildlife within the pit. Let's start with this. Wildlife safety within the mysterious flesh pit. Your visit to the mysterious flesh pit can be most pleasurable and rewarding experience. Or it could be a time of vexation, distress, or even tragedy. Such depends on how you and your family observe these simple guidelines and avoid designed hazards. Take a minute to read through these simple but important safety rules. Then go on to a pleasant park experience. It's required for visitors to go to an orientation to know which areas are closed because of wildlife, but it's still likely for visitors to encounter them, so they have to be cautious and follow the safety rules. It's actually very simple safety tips to remember. Just minimize disturbance of the wildlife and exercise proper equipment handling. Fungal growth, compound surface fauna, microbacteria, and abyssal copods. Fungal growth can be toxic to humans. Compound surface fauna is a hybrid of surface animals. Microbacteria aggressively territorial over feeding zones. And abyssal copods, which are considered hazardous towards everyone's safety and well-being. You know, some of these creatures are both like ugly but also really cool to look at. These are the type of wildlife that could be found within the pit, and they seem similar to bacteria that could be found in your body, but you know, now they're kind of like big creatures. Within a big creature. <laughs> I believe the wildlife within the pit are blind, so you can just quietly change your course to avoid them. You can still observe the wildlife if you want, but it's good to have enough distance from them. But once the life form starts sniffing for you and clicking, maybe it's best to leave the area. It's probably looking for you. Now, the wildlife seems to tolerate the presence of visitors, and alerting the wildlife about your presence seems to help it not freak out as easily, but again, you should still keep your distance and try not to disturb them. Some of these creatures can hunt and eat you if they wanted to, so being cautious is highly recommended, but we're only human. I'm sure many visitors got injured during an encounter with one of these creatures, so it's inevitable for someone to get hurt. Maybe you should bring a weapon to defend yourself, but again, how well can these weapons defend you from these certain creatures? Some of these creatures can grow up to 12 feet tall! Wow! And back to the compound surface fauna, man. Some humans can get caught in that situation. And look, there's evolutions within the pit. A surface animal just so happened to enter the pit, started living there, and then they started to evolve as they adapted to the environment. As their lives continued, they started to lose their eyes and other organs. Oh my. And at some point, they ended up looking like this. What happened to you? Gosh, this makes me wonder. What if you put a colony of humans in there? How will they look after thousands of years? <laughs> Maybe it's best that we don't know. But honestly, the thought of the pit itself digesting me is enough for me to stay away. The creatures within the pit are unsettling, sure, but you know, you're going inside of a bigger one, so huge, just 
burping can make like a whole earthquake. I'm sorry, I think that will keep me away. <laughs> it's a thousand times more scarier than what could be inside of it. Like picture it going on a rampage, yikes. Now there's more interesting information about the pit from the types of jobs people do, letters, propaganda against the pit, and hinting towards something ritualistic. There's even more about the history that I didn't cover here, so if you want to check it out, please go check it out. It's the link in the description, come on. I get overwhelmed easily with a lot of information, which is why I couldn't cover everything. <laughs> sorry. Though I do hope you enjoyed watching this video, go check out the website. I better not get you dying on me. Have a good day and goodbye. Like and subscribe.